TV. I'm your host, Lisa Boldo, and I'm so excited to bring you what I have tonight. I want to thank you, first of all, for just, you know, spending the next 30 minutes or so with me, taking time out of your evening to hear what the Spirit of God would say to you. So I believe that our time together is going to be really blessed. And again, I'm just, I'm so glad that you're here with me and for those who will catch the replay later. So, you know, I always like to say it's good that you're here because Proverbs 19 and 15 says that intelligent people are always ready to learn, right? Their ears are open for knowledge. So it's really good that you're here. And so I just want to say hello. I see everybody jumping in and I'd love to take the time to say hello to you uh, all personally, but then, you know, that would cut into our time and this is going to go up for a replay on my website and it's going to be evergreen. So I'm really excited about it. So before we get started, I want to just start with a prayer. So Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come before you tonight, Lord, me and all the viewers watching, Lord, and those who will watch the replay. And Father, I pray that the words that come out of my mouth tonight, Lord God, that they would be only your words. Let the viewers only see me, Lord, as your vessel. None of me, Lord, but all of you with just what you've entrusted me with. Father, I thank you right now that your word is going to go forth and it is going to bring um, much joy and power and maybe even in a brand new way. So again, thank you so much and I pray this in Jesus' mighty name, right? The name above all names. Oh, yes. So I'm excited about tonight's topic. You know, I always ask the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to talk about? And I really do that in any video that, oh, I see some hearts coming, yay. Um, so I really like to do that, you know, with any video that I do. And sometimes it's very, very clear what, what you know, the topic should be. And other times I go to him because there's many different directions that, that I could go in, right? And so... I started thinking about the weekend. Oh my gosh, I love you guys. I started thinking about the weekend and, you know, the upcoming weekend. And you always think about, you know, what are you going to be doing for fun, for relaxation? And I started thinking about what I like to do with my husband. And I'm telling you, the Lord dropped this in my spirit. And we like to watch movies together. We don't get a chance to do that all the time, but when we do, our favorite thing um, to watch together, it's superhero movies. And I started thinking about this and I really felt the spirit of God just saying like, keep going, keep going with it. You know, I'm going somewhere with this. And I was like, oh my goodness, you want me to talk about superheroes, right? And so the Holy Spirit gave me the green light and he just proceeded to show me more and more and more. So I just love that, you know, and, and, there may be some religious spirits out there like, oh, you know, why would you listen? I am transparent and I'm telling you, we like superhero movies. And if you're being honest, you probably do too. So, you know, I posted a question earlier on Facebook today about, you know, and I asked who was your favorite superhero TV, either in TV or movie growing up or who is it now? And um, I really didn't get a chance to see, you know, the different comments. But if you haven't commented, post it here. Who did you grow up on? Who did you like? You know, um, and I said that I would share it, you know, that I would share mine in this broadcast tonight. And my favorite was always Superman. It just was. And I remember, you know, as a young kid, I would watch the Batman TV show, you know, with, um, Oh, what was his name? Um, Adam West, right? I'm dating myself. You know, this was like late 60s. I was really young and um, maybe even like in the 70s, you know, all the replays and everything of it. But, and I loved, you know, Batgirl because I loved her purple costume and I loved Catwoman, even though, but she was so mean. I didn't like her character, but I loved her outfit. And I thought, gosh, she just needs to come on our side, right? They called them superheroes. I don't really know what her thing was except for meow you know but um i know she was mean <laughs> but anyway my favorite was always superman but why why well number one because he could fly 
right? He, he could fly. And I just love the idea of like flying and just being able to look, you know, have you ever had a dream about flying? Oh my gosh. How did that feel to you? I mean, you really are like, you feel like you're flying and it's, it's an awesome feeling. He was good looking, right? Superman was good looking. I mean, I'm talking about, you know, Christopher Reeve back in the eighties, right? The Superman one, two, three. Oh, he was awesome. He was so good to everyone. He had x-ray vision, right? Right? And he was just cool. He looked good in his outfit. I'm just saying, right? Superman was a defender of the weak. You know, the, the whole thing with Lex Luthor. But, you know, but I want to know who your favorite superhero was. And I'm going to go back and look at, the, look at that later. But so here's the question. Why do we like superhero movies? And believe me, I'm going to get into scripture and the word, but I really, you know, why do we like them? Come on, you know you like them too. I do. I love superhero movies. And lately it's the, the Avengers, right? Iron Man and Captain America come together. And then there's the Incredible Hulk, right? So cool. So we like, number one, that they have power right? They can fly, they can jump, they've got superhuman strength, they always, you know, they they always defeat evil, right? Good versus evil. And in any superhero movie, there's always good versus evil, and the good guys, you know, they always win. And so I love that. And then, you know, they always defend people. I, I, just, I just think that's awesome. Again, they have superhuman strength, right? And they're usually good looking. I would say maybe except for the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> but even his greenness was cute when, you know, he was only ever, you know, mean to the bad guys, right? And then you would see some, you know, poor blind girl falling, you know, in the field and the Incredible Hulk would go and scoop her up and, you know, start running with her, right? And then he would put her down in a place that was safe and she couldn't see his ugliness because she was blind and she'd touch his face and anyway it was just beautiful so I like the Incredible Hulk too and so but the real thing about superhero movies the real thing about it that the why it's so powerful is because it gives you a visual of who really reside you know who really resides in what appears to be an ordinary human being right think about that Think about it. Bruce Wayne, Batman. Batman was the superhero living on the inside of him, right? Diana Prince, Wonder Woman. Come on, ladies. Who didn't love Wonder Woman? Please. She was beautiful. I loved Wonder Woman. And my favorite was Superman, but I loved Wonder Woman. And I used to watch the show, you know, every week and loved her outfit. And she was just so beautiful. And she could jump and, you know, she could, th those bracelets, bulletproof, you know, I loved it. The lasso. In any event, Diana Prince had Wonder Woman living on the inside of her, right? Clark Kent had Superman living on the inside of him. So he appeared to be human, but boy, when the need arose, bam, they would turn on the super, you know, the super uh, hero powers and they could defeat everything. It was like they had blinders on and they just went through you know, to defeat the evil and to just do the mission at hand like a soldier and not think twice about it. I love it. And then, of course, David Banner had the Incredible Hulk living on the inside of him. And that wasn't, you know, such a great thing because it was the, the whole anger thing. However, you know, I, I mean, anyway, but that's the, the point is, is that's who was on the inside of him. And he did have superhuman strength. And I don't know, I like the Hulk. But anyway, you're, you know, and then you're thinking while you're watching a superhero movie, wow, you know, they, and especially when you're younger, they've got all these powers. I would like to have power like that, right? Don't you think that? I think that, like, wow, I would love to be able to, you know, fly and do all these great things, right? But here's the deal. Okay, now we're going to come with truth. Ah, you have the ultimate superhero power living on the inside of you. Now, come on, you knew that I was going to be going there, right? You knew it. You knew it. So the next time you are watching a superhero movie, God wants you to be full of this truth right here. If you are born again, you have the Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead living on the inside of you. 
Remember what I said, right? When you're watching a superhero mu movie, even Thor, right? He's like the latest one, you know, with the hammer. I like Thor too. He's always fighting against evil. I love him. And the thing is, with that big hammer that he carries, wherever he throws it, nobody else can pick it up. It will fly right back to him because, because only apparently he's honorable or worthy of carrying that hammer. I, I like Thor too. So, and I love how in the Avengers, they all come together to, you know, they all work together in unity, which is what the body of Christ needs to be doing, right? They're not jealous of each other's, you know, powers or giftings, right? We shouldn't be ever jealous of another believer's, you know, giftings from the Lord. We should all be working together in unity with our own gifts so that we can make the world like mm, a better place, right? So, the Lord wants you to know this. And like, once again, you know, and I already said it, Bruce Wayne had Batman, Diana Prince, Wonder Woman, you know, Clark Kent, Superman, you have Jesus Christ. Oh my gosh. The Holy Spirit, the very spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, living on the inside of you, the creator, the creator of the universe. I'm not yelling at you. Forgive me. I'm just passionate. The creator of the universe lives in you. You, please, you have to get, I'm telling you, this is why the Lord was like superheroes. Superheroes, talk about it. Talk about it. Because my people are superheroes. You are a superhero because you have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. Please, you've got to get a revelation of this. And remember what I said that they acted like ordinary human beings. They were good, you know, moral people, right? But when, when it came time and the evil showed its ugly face, bam, they were ready and they would defeat it. You have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. Oh my gosh, because now we're going to get, now I'm going to bring it with scriptures. Is that okay? I have to. How can I not? I have to. Romans 8, 11 says the spirit of God, I just said this, who raised Jesus from the dead lives in in you. You know, it's so powerful if you go back later and you read it for yourself. Open it up. Open the word. Romans 8, 11. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you if you were born again. Okay, now I want to talk about, um, well, I'm going to just continue to talk about the ultimate superhero in you called the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I'm going to be quoting some scriptures here. Jesus said in John 16, 7, it is for your benefit that I go away, right? He needed, he had to go away. He said, it's for your benefit that I go away so I can send the Holy Spirit, right? Your advocate, your comforter, the one who's going to represent me and, and show you things to come, right? The one who's going to give you and do you with power to do the things that I've called you to do. Oh, wow. And then in John 16, 12 through 14, Jesus said to the disciples, he said, I still have much to tell you, but you can't bear it. You can't bear it yet, right? You can't bear to hear it right now. Wow. I wonder what those things were that Jesus wanted to tell them. But in any event, he said, however, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. So there were things that Jesus did not get a chance to tell them. That he said, Jesus said, the Holy Spirit will tell you. The Holy Spirit will show you. Okay, so we've got the word of God as our guide, but then we've got the Holy Spirit to give us that revelation, right? That revealed knowledge from heaven. That's what revelation is. It's revealed knowledge from God, from, you know, and he brings it to you from the Holy Spirit. Okay, and then Jesus said, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own but he will speak what he hears and he will declare to you what is to come. He will glorify me, right? Jesus was saying the Holy Spirit will glorify him, Jesus. Jesus said he'll glorify me by taking from what is mine and disclosing it to you and telling it to you. That's what he was saying. Mm, so powerful. Romans 9, 11 um, it says, I speak the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it. Through the Holy Spirit, my conscience and the Holy Spirit confirm it. So this is where I always say, pay attention to the I shoulds and the I shouldn'ts. 
right? Because there's a lot of times that your your mind may want to do something, but your heart, right? Your gut is saying, mm, probably shouldn't do that. That's the holy where the Holy Spirit speaks to you, okay? That means you shouldn't do it. And if you go against it later on, what do we always say? I knew I shouldn't have done that, right? I knew I shouldn't have done that. Pay attention to the I shoulds and the I shouldn'ts. So, so, so important. And, you know, you can read this scripture where Paul said, I speak the truth in Christ. I'm not lying. My conscience confirms it through the Holy Spirit. My conscience and the Holy Spirit confirm it. Okay. Then Jesus said, okay, you know, we're talking about how when I talked about these super, the superheroes, right? They had power to defeat the enemy, right? But we have the power to defeat the enemy with a word, right? They always had to do actions and da-da-da. They couldn't just speak and boom, and it was done. They couldn't cast out demons, right? They could do all the physical stuff. And that's what we have angels for, right? The angels, they're mighty. They're, they excel in strength, right, to help us. But we have the Holy Spirit, and we can cast out devils with a word, you have the word of God. The Holy Spirit will work through you, right? Jesus said, I will work through you, confirming my word with signs and wonders. If you look and see, you know, how the different um, disciples did all these miracles in Jesus' name, right? The healings, the miracles, the signs, the wonders, because Jesus was working through them through the Holy Spirit in them. Remember that after Jesus rose from the dead, he never healed another person. He never actively, you know, um, um, he had the disciples do it. He had us do it. He Now it's for us, right? Jesus said, it's not just for them, it's but it's for all those who would come after them and believe in me. You know, he says that in the book of John. So I wish I would have wrote down that exact scripture, but it's in there. So, Jesus said in Luke 10, 19, behold, I have given, past tense, I have given you, right, authority and power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and, this is the amplified, physical and mental strength and ability over all the power that the enemy possesses. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. And nothing shall in any way harm you. My gosh. We really have to get a revelation of this. And I mean, I'm, I'm ready to see a superhero movie this morning, th this weekend. And just, you know, just as I'm watching, like, man, I could do more than they can do because I've got the Holy Spirit. I've got the whole, the creator of the entire universe living on the inside of me. I can speak and bam, it has to be as long as it's in the will of God, right? Well, I, that, that's not exactly true either. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Do you see that? Right? I want to say that, you know, as long as it's got, no, 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 no. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. So you can speak, and if, as long as you're believing what you're speaking, good or bad, thank you, Holy Spirit, for correction. See, he loves us so much. He's not going to let me make a mistake coming to you in this broadcast because I'm his vessel, you know, and that. I've already prayed, don't let words come out of my mouth that are not you, that are not of you. And he'll be quick to correct me, and I love it. I love it. You know, when, when a child um, is disciplined by their parent, you know, in a loving way, but disciplined, it's because the parent loves them. But the Bible says if you don't discipline your children, you don't love them. It actually says you hate them. You know, that that's... You get with the Lord on that, but I'm just saying, you know, so I appreciate, I, you know, wisdom comes when you're ready to learn and let the Lord uh, speak to you and teach you and correct you, right? This is good stuff. Okay, so Jesus is my superhero and he's your superhero, right? There is no other. It's Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, we magnify the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for what you did for us at the cross. When he said it is finished, it was finished. Remember that law, the spiritual law is already in place now that, you know, you've got all ability over the enemy and you really need to understand this. You really need to know this. You have to know this. Jesus said in Matthew 10, 8, heal the sick, 
raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, drive out demons. Freely you have received because Jesus was saying, I gave you this power. Now you go and release it to others. But how can you release it to others if you first haven't been born again, you know, that you've, you received the Holy Spirit. You've got to receive the Holy Spirit. Oh my, we really need to understand who we really, really are in Christ and who Christ, who Christ is in us. I mean, right? You're in him, he's in you and, and the father's in him and he's in the father. So we not only have Jesus, we have the father and we have the Holy Spirit, Ah, right? Because they're three in one and they're in you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus says in John 14, 20, when I am raised to life again, he was telling the disciples this, when I am raised to life again, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Okay? I'm going to say that one more time. He said to the disciples, right, when I am raised to life again, you will know that I am in the Father, I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. That's awesome. So that just confirms what I was just saying earlier. And that was John 14, 20. Okay. Then in John 17, 21, Jesus says he was um, praying to the father, right? He was, he was at, at saying to the father, he said that they all may be one just as you father and just, I'm sorry, let me start again. John 17, 21, Jesus said that they all may be one just as you father are in me and I in you that they also may be one in us so that the world may believe and be convinced that you have sent me, right? That the Father has sent Jesus, that the world would be convinced. So Jesus is saying that he wanted, um, he wanted us, you and me, the body of Christ, the body of believers, all of us, to be as one just as the Father and Jesus are one right? And that they are in us, we are in them. He wants us to all be unified as well so that the world will know that Jesus is real. He is the Lord. You know what? We want to make Jesus famous, right? Everywhere we go, we want to be a light. So when people say, how are you so happy? How are you, you know, how do you have it together? How do you stay in rest? How are you peaceful? And you say, because you know what? It is finished. <laughs> it is finished. It's finished. Jesus said it is finished. Jesus paid the price for me to be in rest, right? And he gave me all authority over the enemy. Why wouldn't I be in rest? Boy, that's a good answer. Thank you, Holy Spirit, right? That's a good answer. If somebody asks you, how do you have it so together? Because Jesus took all of my junk so I could have all of his goodness so I could have everything that was his. That's good news. That is such good news, right? The gospel, good news. He took our shame. He took our sins. He took away the sins of the entire world. But it's received by grace, right? What's grace? Grace is the fact that he did it for us when we didn't deserve it, right? He did it for all sinners. But it's, it's, it's obtained through faith, meaning you have to believe that he did it for you. And when you believe that he did, you know, that he did this for you and you want what he has and you go to him, oh my gosh, when you really believe what he did for you, and I'm saying share this with unbelievers, share this with that young person in your life who is on drugs, that doesn't even know that God really loves them, who thinks that they're so unworthy. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? God is just waiting for them with open arms. He is waiting for you with open arms. He's saying, come to me. I will take all your baggage. I already took it. He already paid the price so completely with his life and blood for, for you, for me, for for the whole world, everyone that would receive him. And then what happens is the Holy Spirit comes in. The minute you ask Jesus and you say, Lord, I believe, I believe what you did for me, right? You get a picture. Watch the passion of the Christ if you have to. I mean, I'm just saying, you know, and that doesn't even do it justice because it, the Bible says he was beaten unrecognizable, unrecognizable. He couldn't even recognize him. He was marred more than any human being ever was, it says in Isaiah. And, and so 
I mean, this is what he did for you and me because he loves us so much. So he took away the sins of the world, right? Everybody's sins are paid for. Everybody's, everybody's sins are already paid for. However, they have to, they have to ask Jesus for that. They got to repent. They got to come to him. And Jesus said, anyone who comes to me, I will not cast out. But you need to come to him with your whole heart and repent. And listen, you don't have to list every sin that you ever did. You're just sorry that you've lived your life for yourself and done it your way and made a mess of things. And you just say, Lord, teach me. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Be my Lord. Teach me your ways. I want, I, that's what I did. I was on my knees in the bathroom at work, you know, and, and I was like, Lord, I don't want to die. I just said, I didn't even know to call him Father or Jesus. I just said, God, help me. Please help me. If you help me, I'll do anything. I surrender. I'm tired of doing things my way. I want to do things your ways. Your way, teach me. Show me how. And, and I will. And I meant it with my whole heart. And man, the minute you come to the Lord with your whole heart, boom. Now the Holy Spirit goes, comes in and he recreates your spirit. That's what it means to be born again. And like I said, I did a video um, uh, just recently, about a 12-minute video. You can find it um, on my website or on my Facebook page under the videos about being born again. I explained it. Oh, my gosh, it's awesome. Send that to the person in your life that, you know, again, that you know needs to be born again because I'm not like, you have to be. Like, I explain why every single person would want to be born again. Okay. Oh my gosh, we're almost out of time and I'm just, oh my gosh. So again, the Holy Spirit will come in and the Holy Spirit, you're, if you're going to do anything for the Lord, you've got to, you've got to have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. And if you are born again, you've asked Jesus to come in and just be, you know, the Lord of your life, take over your life. You know, <clears throat> it's not enough to just believe in him. Demons believe in him too, right? The devil believes in Jesus. But it's submitting to his authority. It's giving your life over to him so he can make your life beautiful and make it what he wants it to be so you can be full of his joy and his peace and his happiness and everything that he died to give you so that you can walk in authority and power and not be blinded and deceived by the devil anymore. Ah, anymore. Okay, so... You know, there's a difference. I just want to touch on it really quickly. Oh my gosh, we're almost out of time. But I want to touch on it. You know, there's a difference between being born of the Spirit, right? Being born again of the Spirit and being baptized in the Holy Spirit. So I know that many of you watching may have this question. Like, you know, yeah, I've heard that. You know, what's the difference? And so let me see if I can just explain it quickly. Being born of the Spirit means that when you ask Jesus to come in and be your Lord, psh, immediately the Holy Spirit comes to, to live inside of you and your spirit man is made new. He is making it new. But things are not going to change in your life until you renew your mind now with the Word. That's, you know, step one, you be born again. You got to be born again. Step two is you got to now renew your mind. Otherwise, your heart and your mind will always be in conflict. They will always be in conflict right? Your heart will be saying one thing, your mind will be saying another, and you'll be like, ah, God, why is this happening? Because you're not aligned with his word. You got to get in the word. Okay. And then being baptized in the Holy Spirit is, you know, in the Bible, it talks about how there were believers, right? The people who were baptized, um, uh, let me just see, how do I have this in my notes? Um, they were already believers that were born again, right? They were already believers that were born again, but they hadn't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit yet. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the work of the Holy Spirit. It's, the, it's, it's where the Holy Spirit comes now upon you and gives you the power to carry out what God has called you to do. So when you're born again, yes, the Holy Spirit is going to come inside of you and recreate your spirit. Now you're re, you're, you're, you become a new creation. But, you know, and now he's going to help you to start renewing your mind so you can walk out the things, you know, walk in the ways of God, right? But you want the baptism of the Holy Spirit so that you can be, let me tell you something, speaking in tongues, absolutely. 
Absolutely. Oh, there is so much power in speaking in tongues. And I do believe that is the evidence because everywhere they were baptized in the, in the Bible, in the, the Holy Spirit, they were speaking in tongues, right? All of them, when the Holy Spirit came on them, when Jesus said, wait here for the Holy Spirit to come upon you, they were all had tongues of fire over their heads and they started speaking in tongues in different languages, right? So you can read more about this in Acts 19 and of course in Luke 24. Now, I will say this because we are out of time tonight. Now, we don't have time to go into the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but I'm not going to leave you hanging, okay? And so I'm sure that you want that if you haven't had it yet. And so what I want to do is I just want to mention there is a video on YouTube and um, you can Google this or write it down, but Charles Hunter, it's actually Joan Hunter's um, father, uh, Charles and Francis Hunter, but Charles Hunter, just Google or go on YouTube, YouTube and just uh, search, do a search and put in Charles Hunter dash baptism of the Holy Spirit. And you'll see a video that will come up how to minister the Holy Spirit. And I love the way Charles teaches it. Now, I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit many years ago. However, I love the way Charles explains it. And when I have taught people, you know, um, and ministered the baptism of the Holy Spirit, every time I minister the baptism of the Holy Spirit to someone, I explain it the way Charles did. It doesn't take an hour. It's just, you know, it's quick. I just explain it. And then, you know, lay hands on them or you know there's been many people who you can just if you're alone in your room and just with your whole heart you ask the Lord for the baptism of the Holy Spirit and then you just start speaking you know make utterances to him oh, what I would suggest is watch the video by Charles Hunter because it will just kind of really explain to you how the baptism of the Holy Spirit you know um, how it comes about and why it's so important and it's just wonderful it's absolutely wonderful so, okay, we're out of time totally, but I want, I can't end without, um, you know, helping you to make Jesus the Lord of your life if you never have yet. So if you're watching and you've never asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life and you want to be born again, then I'm going to just walk you through a simple prayer. Just repeat after me. You can, you know, always watch the replay as well, but, but please just do this and mean it with your whole heart. Jesus knows if you mean it, right? God knows if you mean it with your whole heart and then the Holy Spirit will come in you and start to recreate. He will not start to your, your spirit will be made perfect immediately, but then you'll start, you know, thinking about the things of God more and the I shoulds and the I shouldn'ts. Like I should read the word. Your mind may try to fight you, but listen, if you really want everything God has for you, you can't do it without his word. This is our instruction manual for life. You could do it on your smartphone. You, I suggest definitely getting a Bible. This right here is the New Living Translation, but I have the Amplified. I have the New King James Version. I just love the, um, the um, New Living Translation because it's so easy to understand, and it's such a great Bible you know, for beginners. Um, but just say this out loud. Mean it with your whole heart. Just repeat after me. Just say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. And remember, he calls us saints as if you are already are born again. But Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I believe that you died on the cross and paid for my sins forever. And I believe that God the Father raised you again on the third day. I know you're alive today and you live forever. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to come into my heart now and change my life forever. I ask you to be my Lord and Savior. Teach me your ways. Teach me your truth. Jesus, in your holy name I pray. Amen and amen. Wow. Welcome to the family of God. Yay. And so again, I just recommend getting, you know, an easy to read Bible. Get in that word. Start aligning yourself. You know, we're out of time tonight, but I really pray that this has been a blessing to you. If it has, you know, comment. I love to go back and read the comments later. Let me know how these broadcasts are changing your life. Maybe something in particular that stood out to you tonight. Um, and, you know, visit my website at lisaboldo.com. It's L-I-S-A-B-U-L-D-O.com. And uh, I have a, a free PDF mini 
book, uh, mini ebook there. It's called A Revelation of Healing. And it's just something that God had given me. Um, and I put it in just a mini ebook. I think it's like five or six pages. You can download it for free. And of course, there's so much more revelation, but it's a great place to start. And I just love you. I bless you. I appreciate you. Thanks for tuning in. Share this with on your page so we can reach more people for the kingdom. And I will see you next time. Have a wonderful rest of your night, and God bless you. I'll see you soon. Okay, bye-bye.